All right, uh, I'm gonna show you guys a book that you might not be aware of. Unless you're really nerdy, <laughs> then you're aware of it. All right, so this is a uh, an older Mike Mignola um, run of books, The Chronicles of Quorum. And I only am gonna be showing you, there are multiple volumes of this. Uh, this is the, uh, the first book. This was published, um, who was it, Titan Comics. This was actually referred to me <laughs> by Amazon, of all things. And I was like, wait, what? Is that a Mignola cover? And I started looking at it, and I was like, wait a minute. I got, like, uh, what is it, issue two and three of this. Um, not really mind-blowing. Uh, we're going to say this is a, we'll call this Mike 7.5. It, it feels like a 75% effort, uh, in my opinion, based on the era. Uh, this is around the same time as, what is it? Uh, I pulled another book here, like the Iron Wolf, right? Uh, this book... This book is is uh, far superior uh, quality wise as far as the artwork's concerned to uh, corn, but uh, nonetheless, I always I always love finding new older Manila work that I don't own. So and this thing was cheap. Uh, if you can find this collected one, this hardcover, much much cheaper than uh, tracking down the uh, floppy edition comics. So uh, I think. Let's see, who, who inked this? Okay, so um, this Rick Bircha inked, I think, only issue one. Uh, Kelly Jones, uh, famous artist, famous comic artist, uh, actually inked several of these issues. And then um, the reason why I only have this one is it goes through issue four. Starting in issue five, Mignola still receives penciler credit. Uh but I would argue that he probably only did uh, roughs. It, it looks like Kelly Jones' work um, does not look... It's very wispy and not a lot of solids. And I don't know. I It just... it. it I'm pretty positive he just, he, you know... I don't want to say half-assed, but it, I feel like he just kind of... He, he bummed through the pages and um, Kelly Jones was more of a finish artist, you know. Um, Based on the on the years when this was coming out, though, you didn't have a whole lot of finished artists credit unless they were doing uh, majority of the lifting. And I, you know, based on what I know, Mignola puts on a page. Um, I don't know. You know, if it's not more than fifty percent, Mignola still gets the pencil cred. Yeah, this is yeah. The layouts here are awesome. Uh, really cool faces. Remi uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that kind of gives me a little bit of that throwback feel to like uh, Gotham by Gaslight, you know, books like that. I mean, this is my favorite era of Mignola work. So, um, again, even though I know, you know, like I say, this isn't a 100% effort job in my opinion. Um, it's still really, really cool to look at, see all these cool layouts and, you know, again, seeing them draw something um, semi-complete. You know, like, again, I think that I got the original books that I have as floppies. Um, you know, they're just damaged books. They were probably out of a 50-cent bin. I, I, I'm sure I didn't spend more than two bucks a pop on them. Yeah, and then uh, Fun Colors, too. Looks like um, Watercolor. They probably did the, what do you what is it, like the blue line, you know, the acetate color thing for these. Um, this does feel a little bit like, like the... Uh, I don't know. This feels like like uh, the kind of trade paperback you would get from like 1989, you know. Uh, but the printing of it is is immaculate. Um, crisp edges, nice. You know, this almost feels like a uh, what do they call that? Print on demand, right? This feels like a print on demand book. Yeah, the the external hardcover. It's like super gloss, really bright, and then you get to the interiors, and it's like. A little dull, you know. I, I think these might be. I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, like what, like 65 pound paper. And most most current books, I think, is like uh, what, like 70, 70 or 90. You know, unless you're Marvel and you do, you know, 70 throughout. But yeah, this stuff's this stuff's cool. This stuff's cool. And it's funny too. There's a lot of stuff in here too that's like. Um, like that screams that screams Art Adams to me, <laughs> or even or even uh, uh, Walter Simonson, you know. I know a lot a lot of those dudes were big gaffle on each other, you know. They take stuff here and there. 
Art Adams, Rick Leonardi. There's there's definitely little tricks that they would all do, and they all kind of would pick up off each other. But yeah. So anyways, yeah, if you're not aware of this book, um, now you are. Uh, most people, I think, who are aware of this book and really into it, you obviously know a lot more than I do about it. I Essentially, this one was a... Uh, again, it was referred to me based on an older purchase, and I was like, oh my gosh. And then I had to go, you know, doing the uh, internet search and kind of looking at pages, and I was like, how did I miss this thing, you know? And I'm like, oh wait, I didn't miss it. I got a few of the floppies, I just didn't... Um, it just didn't do it for me where I, I felt the need to run and find the other issues, you know. But yeah, I did I did actually take a peek and I was I was going through the, the issues that follow this trade right here and um it just I was like, Yeah, I, I'm gonna skip those. They're they're uh we'll say the thirty three percenter. Those are the thirty three percenter issues by Mignola. And then I think he ends up actually doing the covers on a few other books up through like issue nine or 12 or something like that um they have a little bit of a cover gallery here you get the uh issue one cover on the original uh mini mini trade i don't know what you call them a maxi comic uh issue two cover there's the, the cover to three and then the cover to four um one or two of the books had covers and i think actually interiors as well uh jackson geis butch i think he was going by jackson at the time uh jackson who's also it was Butch Geist, I guess. Um, and then uh, Kelly Jones and then Mignola comes back, I believe. I don't have them here in front of me, but yeah, Mignola comes back and then does a few more covers for the series. And the covers are really sick. I really do wish that they threw them in here too. Uh, but anyways, yeah, uh, there it is. Um, Chronicles of Corum, the Knight of Swords. And it is a run, it is a series, uh, it's a Michael Moorcock uh, run, and there's a ton of hardcovers, a ton of comics. Uh, this just happens to be the one that I grabbed because it has the uh, Prime Mignola cuts. Peace.